question today is, for someone following a whole food plant-based diet, does the small amount of added sugar in salad dressings, almond milk, and other occasional treats damage the endothelial wall of the arteries? That's a very profound question. And as our friends and colleagues in the field of toxicology tell us, uh, the dose makes the poison. You know, we can all handle a little bit of arsenic, but if you eat a lot of it, you're going to have problems. Uh, the same thing with the sugar and the salt and the oil. The, uh, the more you eat, the more it damages the arteries. That kind of goes without saying. This question is, well, what about this? That little hint of sugar that's in the salad dressing or in the, uh, you know, the confection of some sort, is it really caused that kind of damage to your entire 60,000 miles of, of endothelial lining that we all have in our blood vessels here? And in the real world, and, and no one has done this study where you, you uh, take a bunch of healthy volunteers and give them a little bit of sugar in some vehicle uh, and check their endothelial function and then give them a little less and check their endothelial function and a little less and, and, and find that one threshold point where ah, there's no effect at all and say, no one's gonna do that study. And, uh, and, there's, and there's no real reason to because of the variation between humans and depends what you had for your last meal, what you've been eating all along. Uh, no one's going to do that study. So where does it leave us with this question? Uh, as a scientist and a fan of physiology, uh, do I think that the tenth of a milligram of, of sucrose, uh, the table sugar that might be in some, uh, some sweetening agent or whatever, really cause damage? No, the, the, the liver is so powerful, one pass through the liver, and most of those uh, molecules are metabolized into something else. And the little bit of salt is diluted out very quickly. And so in the real world, in the strict physiologic sense, I, again, haven't seen the definitive studies, but my feeling is, no, those particular molecules really don't cause any physiologic harm. That said, however, as my colleagues, Dr. Alan Goldhammer, Dr. Doug Lyle, the, the authors of The Pleasure Trap would say, yeah, those molecules may not cause damage in and of themselves, but what they do, these are classic pleasure trap foods. And people eat them, it hits their tongue, they get a dopamine release in their brain, and you want a little more of it. Or if the pleasure trap mechanism really gets active and you're rattling around, you'll have something a little sweet, now I want something a little salty. And then you go for something salty. Mm, ooh, I like something crunchy now. And then you, you want something crunchy. And then, mm, gee, I'd like something chewy. And these little bit of molecules set that pleasure trap mechanism going. And you wind up eating more and more of these foods. And they're foods that, in substantial amounts, cause substantial problems. They deprive you of the nutrients that should be in whole plant foods. And they just generally drag the quality of your eating down. So in answer to the question, no, the individual sugar molecules probably aren't causing any harm in themselves, but they open the, the door, the jaws of nutritional hell yawn open uh, when you start adding these things. So be very, very cautious with them uh, because they, are, they will lead you gladly down the primrose path through the pleasure trap. So for that reason, uh, we say eat whole foods and uh, get your enjoyment out of whole fruits, uh, whole olives, whole foods. If you want something uh, chewy or crunchy, you can usually find it in the whole plant world. And that's what I suggest you do. Hi, everyone. Dr. Michael Clapper here announcing our new format for our Q&A with Dr. K. Andy Hagen will be asking me one question that's been sent in by our viewers. So if you want to see if your question is getting answered, do join us for our Q&A with Dr. K right here. Hope to see you then.